OpenAI's chief scientist shocked the world a couple of years ago by suggesting that AI might be slightly conscious. Now a team of 19 top scientists has created a revolutionary checklist that could prove him right. I'm about to show you exactly what they discovered and why it changes everything we thought we knew about artificial intelligence and consciousness. I'm Evan Goldstein. I'm a licensed professional engineer and a data scientist. I'm creating the AI Capitalist channel to talk to leaders and thinkers like you about how we navigate this brave new world of intelligent machines. Science fiction has always loved exploring the idea of artificial intelligence gaining consciousness. Just think about HAL 9000, the infamous supercomputer from the 1968 classic film 2001 Space Odyssey. With AI evolving at such a rapid pace, the notion of conscious machines is starting to feel more realistic. This intriguing potential has caught the attention of prominent figures in the AI community. Just last year, Ilya Sitzker, the chief scientist at OpenAI, shared a thought-provoking tweet suggesting that some of the most advanced AI systems might be slightly conscious. So what is consciousness? Many researchers believe that AI systems have not yet reached the stage of consciousness. However, the swift evolution of AI has sparked some intriguing questions. How would we even recognize consciousness if it showed up? To delve into this, a diverse team of 19 neuroscientists, philosophers, and computer scientists wrote a paper that created a handy checklist. This list outlines criteria that, if satisfied, could suggest a system might have a good chance of being conscious. They shared their draft guide earlier this week on the Archive preprint repository, prior to undergoing peer review. The authors felt it was important to initiate a thoughtful and evidence-based conversation about the fascinating topic of AI consciousness. A big challenge in exploring consciousness in AI is figuring out what it really means to be conscious. In this report, the researchers decided to hone in on phenomenal consciousness which is all about the subjective experience. It's that unique feeling of what it's like to be a person or an animal or even an AI system. There are many neuroscience-based theories that describe the biological basis of consciousness, but there is no consensus on which is the right one. To create their framework, the authors used a range of these theories. The idea is that if an AI system functions in a way that matches aspects of many of these theories, then there's a greater likelihood that it is conscious. To develop their criteria, we must first assume consciousness relates to how systems process information, irrespective of what they're made of, be it neurons or computer chips or something else. This approach is called computational functionalism. They also assumed that neuroscience-based theories of consciousness studied through brain scans and other technologies in humans and animals can be applied to AI. On the basis of these assumptions, the team selected six of these theories and extracted from them a list of consciousness indicators. One of them is the global workspace theory, which asserts that humans and other animals use many specialized systems, also called modules, to perform cognitive tasks such as seeing and hearing. These modules work independently but in parallel, and they share the information by integrating into a single system. A person would evaluate whether a particular system displays an indicator derived from this theory by looking at the architecture of the system and how the information flows through it. And if you feel that you're getting value from this episode, I would appreciate it if you would hit the like button. Hitting like lets me know that I'm making content you wanna see and it spreads that content to others and it helps the channel grow. Together, we can break AI capitalists out of small channel hell. So the team says that a failure to identify whether an AI system has become conscious has important moral implications. If something has been labeled conscious, that changes a lot about how we as human beings feel that the entity should be treated. And you can see my video about that here. Not enough effort is being made by the companies building advanced AI systems to evaluate the models for consciousness and to make plans for what to do if that happens. And that's in spite of the fact that if you listen to the remarks from the leading heads of AI labs, they, they do say that AI consciousness or AI sentience is something that they wonder about. So the authors came up with 14 indicators that we can use to test as to whether a system has genuinely achieved consciousness. The indicators were based on how consciousness is believed to operate within the human brain. The authors categorized their findings. Each task functions like a musical instrument and they come together to create a symphony. And that symphony is our consciousness. Recurrent processing theory is the first theory they looked at and it posits that the foundation of consciousness lies in how information cycles repeatedly through neural networks rather than flowing in just one direction. Think of it like a conversation where each statement builds on previous ones, creating deeper understanding through multiple passes of processing. In the brain, this means signals bounce back and forth between different neural areas with each pass adding layers of processing and meaning. So the first indicator, RPT1, is that input modules using algorithmic recurrence. This indicator looks for systems where information flows in loops within processing modules. Imagine reading a complex paragraph. You might go back and reread parts to better understand them. 
And similarly, the system should process information multiple times with each pass building on the previous one to develop deeper understanding. Now, indicator RPT2 is organized integrated perceptual representations. This one looks for the system's ability to combine various inputs into coherent, meaningful pattern. Instead of just seeing individual pixels, the system should integrate them into a recognizable objects and scenes. Much like how you don't see individual letters when you're reading, but whole words and concepts. The next theory they looked at is global workspace theory, which likens consciousness to a theater where various mental processes vie for the spotlight of our attention. Just like in a company where different departments are bustling with activity, only the information that shines brightest gets shared across the entire organization. In essence, this theory suggests that only the most essential insights make it to the forefront for everyone to access. The first indicator of this GW21 is multiple specialized parallel systems. The system needs different components working simultaneously, like how your brain processes vision, sound, and touch in parallel. These specialized modules should work independently, but they should coordinate when necessary. The next indicator, GWT2, is limited capacity workspace. This requires a central processing area with limited capacity, and it forces the system to prioritize information. It's like having limited working memory. You can only keep a few things in your mind at once. None of us can actually multitask as much as we think we can. The third indicator, GWT3, is global broadcast. Information in the central workspace has to be accessible to all the other parts of the system, like a company-wide memo that ensures everyone has access to important information. And number four, GWT4, is state-dependent attention. The system has to be able to shift its attention based on current needs and chain together different modules to solve complex problems. It's like planning a trip. You focus on different aspects, such as booking, the flight, packaging, arranging transportation, and sequence. Computational higher order theories focus on the system's ability to have thoughts about thoughts, basically self-awareness of mental processes. They suggest that consciousness requires not just processing information, but also understanding and monitoring that processing. A hot one, the generative top-down perception is an indicator. The system should form expectations about incoming information and adjust these expectations based on reality. It's like expecting to see a friend wearing their usual red coat and then updating that expectation when you see them in blue. Part two is metacognitive monitoring, and this requires evaluating the quality of perceptions and distinguishing between reliable and unreliable information. It's like knowing when you're sure about something versus when you're just guessing. The next indicator, hot three, is agency with belief updates. The system has to form and update beliefs based on new information and self-monitoring. It's like being willing to change your mind when presented with convincing evidence. Hot four is sparse and smooth coding. It looks for efficient, organized internal representation patterns. It's like having a well-organized filing system where similar concepts are stored near each other. Attention schema theory proposes that consciousness emerges from the brain's model of its own attention processes. Just as we maintain internal models of our body, of the world, we also maintain a model of attention itself. There's only one real indicator for attention schema. That is ATS-1, the attention control model. This system has to maintain and use an internal model of its attention processes. It's like having a mental map of what you're focusing on and then using that awareness to guide where you're gonna focus next. Predictive processing views the brain as a prediction machine that constantly generates and models the world rather than passively receiving information. The first indicator of prediction processing, PPT1, is predictive coding. The system has to process input by making and updating predictions about what it expects to perceive. It's like anticipating the next word in a sentence and adjusting when you hear something different. Agency and embodiment emphasizes the importance of active interaction with the environment and understanding one's role in these interactions. It suggests that consciousness requires being an active participant in the world. AE1, the first of these indicators, is goal-directed learning. The system has to show flexible goal pursuit behavior, and it has to learn from feedback. It's like adjusting your study strategy based on test results. The second indicator, AE2, is environmental modeling. The system has to understand how its actions affect its environments and vice versa. Think of learning to ride a bicycle. You need to understand how your actions affect your balance and your movement. When each of these instruments is playing together, we can think of ourselves as a way. I find the proposal clear and straightforward without being overly dramatic. Paper is the first word, not the final word, on assessing AI systems for their consciousness, and it invites other researchers to help refine the methodology. We can already start applying these criteria to existing AI systems. For example, the report takes a look at large language models like ChatGPT, and it suggests that they might have some indicators of consciousness linked to global workspace theory. However, it's important to note that the work doesn't claim any current AI system. 
a strong candidate for consciousness, at least not yet. If we can quantify and create algorithms to simulate these processes, might we be able to create an artificial consciousness? If we take these ideas to be true, we find ourselves with two interesting theories about how our brain's conductor orchestrates the symphony of consciousness. Recent studies have been giving us fresh insights to show how valid these theories might be. The first one is called integrated information theory. It suggests that consciousness shows up as a distinct structure in the posterior cortex, which is situated at the back of our brain. According to IIT, this structure keeps active throughout various conscious experiences, like when we look at a picture or listen to music. It relies on different areas of the brain working in harmony. The second theory, global network workspace theory, proposes that consciousness comes to life when information is shared across interconnected networks, primarily featuring the prefrontal cortex located at the front of the brain. According to this idea, information broadcasting should happen when an experience kicks off and then when it wraps up. Recently, researchers have rigorously tested both theories using experiments conducted in six independent laboratories. The results were intriguing and showed that neither theory was entirely right nor entirely wrong. Integrating information theory receives some validation with the discovery of sustained information processing in the posterior cortex, exactly as it suggested, but the researchers did not find the anticipated synchronization between different brain regions that IIT claimed was essential for consciousness. The results for global network theory weren't as reassuring. Evidence of information broadcasting was found in the brain's networks. It only happened at the start of experiences, not both at the beginning and at the end, as the theory proposed. Plus, only certain aspects of consciousness were identified in the prefrontal cortex, which didn't quite align with the theory's broader predictions. These findings represent an exciting leap forward in our grasp of consciousness, even though they don't offer a complete picture. They suggest that both theories could use some tweaking to better explain how our brains create conscious experience. What's remarkable about this study is its collaborative approach, uniting researchers with different views to jointly test their theories. This method, known as adversarial collaboration, highlights how scientific exploration unite varying theoretical perspectives brings us closer to unraveling one of the brain's greatest mysteries. Ultimately, the results imply that the nature of consciousness may be more nuanced and intricate than either theory fully encompasses, which underscores the necessity for ongoing research and possibly new frameworks that can more effectively explain how our brains generate conscious experience. We may need to also consider the fact that we are looking backwards. In many ways, AI systems seem to be converging on our way of thinking. When I ask ChatGPT a question, I get a shockingly human-like response. However, that doesn't mean that the underlying processes that led to that response are in any way similar. It could be that we are much more like large language models, just thinking of the next word in a sentence than we would like to believe. Perhaps the underlying processes are the same, or this could be a case of convergent evolution. An example of this would be flight. There are a lot of ways you could fly from point A to point B. You can take an airplane, you can use a hot air balloon, you can write a rocket. You can use a dirigible like the Hindenburg. Okay, they didn't actually make it all the way to point B. All the humanity and all the fantasies speeding around it. But in the animal kingdom, when creatures develop flight, they always converge on a single answer. Bugs have them, bats have them, so did extinct pterosaurs. All these animals developed wings. Why didn't the animals develop any of the other means of flight? They just didn't have the appendages or other structures to work with to create a hot air lift system or a rocket. This is a system of convergent evolution where selective pressure drives species to develop similar structures for similar goals, but entirely independent of one another. It may be that we're just applying pressures to AI to create the ability to converse and respond, even if we don't fully understand how that's happening. But we reward models that respond appropriately that may change and keep moving forward. We're assuming that because they respond like us, they may eventually converge on the same processes thought that we have. And that seems to be the theory here. If consciousness arises, it'll be convergent within human consciousness and therefore identifiable. But there's no reason that consciousness must arise in this way. It could just as easily be the case that consciousness will arise in a way that is completely different without any of these telltale indicators. What we need to be focusing on is figuring out what we are even looking for. We need to come back to more fundamental criteria to decide if a system is in fact conscious. Leave a comment if you have any suggestions. Don't stop now. I have dozens more videos. This video is part of a playlist, which I'll post for you here so that you can go through and watch other videos that are similar, or you can watch our newest videos and we have lots of other playlists. So keep clicking, keep watching. Click over there.